So it was asked that I work out some example problems of the ionic compounds, both naming and writing formulas. So for the writing formulas part of it, I'm going to be on page 211, working out underneath, and it's like right smack in the center of the page, the practice problem number one. And then for writing formulas, I'm going to be on page 237, and we're going to work out number 41. So that's what we're going to work on in this video. Um, we'll see how far we get in each one. I might have to divide this into two. So starting on page 211, <clears throat> number 1A says sodium iodide. And y'all, feel free, you know, pause this, work these all out, and then hit play, and then watch me work them out and check yourself. So when you're working these out, symbol for sodium is Na. Symbol for iodine is I. Sodium is in group one, so it has a plus one charge. Remember, chemists are lazy. We don't really write ones. Iodine is in group 17, so it has a negative one charge. And to write the formula for that, rewrite them down below, a little closer together. The one from the sodium crisscrosses down to the iodine, and same thing happens with that one on the iodine. It crosses down to the sodium. Again, chemists are lazy, so we don't write one, so the final formula is just NaI. Well, that's not what I wanted to do. Yeah. Okay, B says calcium chloride. Um, so calcium, Ca, chlorine, chloride, Cl. Calcium is in group 2, so it's going to have a charge of positive 2. Chlorine is in group 17, so a negative 1. Rewrite your elements down below. The 2 only crosses down as a subscript on the chlorine, and the 1 on the chlorine crosses down to the calcium. So your final formula is CaCl2. The next couple ones I'm going to work out using the least common multiple method. Uh, it's not that one works better than the other, it's just I wanted to show you more than one way to do things. Alright, the next one is potassium sulfide. Potassium is K. Sulfide, which is sulfur, is S. Potassium is in group 1, so it has a positive 1 charge. Sulfur is in group 16, so it's got a negative 2. And the least common multiple of 1 and 2 is going to be 2. So in order to get potassium to be a 2, you have to have 2 of them. And sulfur already is a 2, so there you go. I keep forgetting to get the little dots on the eyes. Okay, next up is lithium nitrate. Whoa, T H I U M. Forgot how to spell for a second. Nitrate. Anything you, anytime you see that the second um, word has an ending that is not I D E, it's a pretty good indication that you're dealing with a polyatomic ion. So you're going to want to get out your polyatomic ion list. So lithium, symbol for that is L I. Nitrate, looking at your polyatomic ion list, is NO3. Charge on lithium is in group 1, so it's a positive 1. Charge on nitrate, according to the table that I gave you, is a negative 1. Least common multiple of 1 and 1 is 1. Yay! So that means we just need one of each. So you just rewrite it. LiNO3. Because we have only one nitrate, we don't need to enclose this in parentheses. If we had more than one, then yeah, we would enclose it in parentheses. Okay, then we have copper 2 sulfate. Ooh, a Roman numeral. Copper 2 sulfate. Symbol for copper? Cu. That Roman numeral 2 tells me that I have a plus 2 charge. Sulfate, again, it does not end in IDE, which means you want to look at this on your periodic, or not your periodic table, your polyatomic ion list. And when you find sulfate, you will see that it is SO4 with a negative 2 charge. 
and least common multiple of these two guys. Two and two means they automatically balance out, so you just write it. C-U-S-O-4. Next up is sodium carbonate. Sodium carbonate. I'm doing a lot of the polyatomic ions because I know that that's probably what you want the most practice with. So sodium, the symbol for that is Na. Carbonate, eight means it's a polyatomic ion. So you go to your list and you see that it is CO3 with a negative two charge. Sodium has a plus one charge because it's in group one. Least common multiple for one and two is gonna be two, LCM over here. And so to get sodium to have a two charge, you need to have two of them. So Na2, and then the CO3 already has a two charge, so you just write CO3, and then it's balanced, sodium carbonate. Remember, feel free to hit pause anytime you need to. Then we have calcium nitrite. Calcium, Ca, group two, so it's two plus charge. Nitrite, this is not the IDE ending, so this means polyatomic ion. You go to your list, nitrite is NO2 with a negative one charge. A two and a one, least common multiple is two. So calcium's already at a two, so we just need one of those. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, nitrate is a negative one. So in order to get it to be a two, I don't know why it's doing that. We need to make sure that we have two of the, that is a mess. Let me see if I can fix this. I don't know why it's being weird like that. So we had calcium two plus nitri nitrite with a minus. So we need one calcium and we need two nitrates. Anytime you need more than one polyatomic ion, you put it in parentheses and put the number outside of the parentheses. Remember this would not be correct because this little part right here does not show that this is the nitrite polyatomic ion. This shows two nitrogens bonded to four oxygens instead of a nitrogen bonded to two oxygens and then those guys, this whole group, bonded to the calcium. And I am going to have to divide this into two videos, so that's okay. Last one we're going to do on here is potassium perchlorate. i got to look up the use on this one. Um, potassium, K, group 1, plus perchlorate, 8, tells you it's a polyatomic ion, and you look it up and you actually see that that is ClO4 with a negative 1 charge. I love it when their numbers match automatically because then all you have to do is write them out like that. No prefixes necessary. If you have any questions about these, please come in tomorrow morning and ask because you do not want to get behind on this.